To understand probability, we're going to need to know a little bit about sets. So we're going to spend a few minutes before we get into probability talking about sets and counting. So let's go ahead and start with sets. Okay, so there's a few uh, notations we need to know about. Uh, first of all, a set is any, col any collection of objects or elements uh, written in such a way that we can tell whether any object is in the set or not in the set. For sets, we generally use uppercase letters to represent sets. And the objects in the set are called elements. And this notation here says that little a is an element of the set big A. This notation here means that little a is not an element, so little a would not be in set A. So, for example, if we were to consider the counting numbers from 1 through 9, then let's suppose we let set A be the numbers 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 9. Then 2 would be an element of the set A, but 1 is not an element of the set A. Every set also has a subset called the empty set. Now, the empty set is just the set with nothing in it. There's a couple of symbols you can use. Uh, you can use uh, this symbol that looks like a circle with a cross through it, a line through it, or you can use a set of empty braces. So let's talk about, let's consider all numbers rolled on a six-sided die. So if you roll a six-sided die, you can get one, two, three, four, five, or six. So if I said, if I talked about the set of numbers rolled on that die that are greater than 10, well, it might sound like a silly question, but it's a way to show you the empty set. Since there are no numbers that you can roll on a die that's going to be greater than 10, then that set would be the empty set. Some other symbols for set. Um, this just means that set A is a subset of set B. This means that set A equals set B. So that would mean that everything that's in A is in B and everything that's in B is also in A. Um, oh, by the way, this up here means uh, everything that's in A is also in B, but you know, not necessarily the other way around. Now, A is not a subset of B is what this means. And this, of course, means that A does not equal B. So consider the counting numbers again, 1 through 9. Let's say A is the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And set B is the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8. And let's say that set C are the numbers 3 and 5, and set D are the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, set C here, where is set C? Set C is a subset of set A because all the elements in C also are in A. But set C is not a subset of B because there's elements in set C that are not in B. Now set A, um, I've written here that set A equals D, but that's not right. That's a typo. Set A does not equal set D. Okay. Set A does not equal set B and set A does not equal set C. And a quick note, the empty set is a subset of every set. So the empty set is a subset of A, subset of B, and subset of C. When we talk about the universal set, we use the capital letter U for the universal set. That's the set that represents all elements that are being considered. Now, a Venn diagram is a visual representation of one or more sets. Uh, below I have a Venn diagram for the union of two sets A and B, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But let's consider the counting numbers, again, 1 through 9. So we would say that the universal set is the set 1 through 9. Now, if we wanted to talk about the union of two sets, and I'm going to have to draw that Venn diagram for you, Okay, I'm sorry. We'll get to that universal set in a minute. I mean, the Venn diagram in just a minute. Um, let's say that set A are the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Set B are the numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6. And set C are the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8. 
to get the union of two sets you just list everything that's in both sets but you don't duplicate so if I notice here one is in set A so one's in the union and this is the union symbol by the way um, three is in both sets but you only list it once here four is in set B so it's got to be in the union five is in both sets but again I only went list it once six is in here seven is in A uh, and nine is in A so these are the elements that would be in the set A union B now if you do A union C you actually get everything because A is the odd numbers C is the even numbers so A union C would be all of the numbers 1 through 9 the intersection of two sets is are the elements that fall simultaneously in both sets and the symbol for intersection is this little upside down looking U okay so let's go back to our universal set um, 1 through 9 and let's go back and look at these sets A, B, and C well notice that set A has 3 in it and set B has 3 in it also set A has the number 5 and set B has the number 5 so we would say that the elements that are in A intersect B are the numbers 3 and 5 now if you look at set C notice that A and C have no intersecting elements so we would say that A intersect C is the empty set here is a Venn diagram uh, this rectangle represents everything that's in the set so if you look here this this circle here represents the set A and this circle here represents the set B the union is the purple shaded region here that's the union so the union would be everything that's in both sets so if you'll notice the union contains the numbers 1 3 5 7 9 but also contains 4 and 6 so if you go up here back up there and look at the union 1 3 4 5 6 7 9 that was the union now notice that remember in the union up here the numbers 2 and 8 weren't in this union notice that they would fall outside they're still in the universal set but they're not in the union now let's talk about the intersection the intersection of the sets is this dark purple area right here in the middle that contains the 3 and the 5 if you remember the intersection of A and B were just those two numbers 3 and 5 now I listed all the other numbers but you can see they're not in the intersection the intersection is just this part right here in the middle okay so now next thing I want to talk about is the complement of a set the complement of a set is generally denoted by A prime sometimes it might be denoted with a bar over it like this but generally we use a little prime symbol here like this okay it's the set of elements that are in U but are not in A so let's go back to our counting numbers here's the universal set since A is the set 1 3 5 7 9 then not A would be the numbers in the universal set that are not in A 2 4 6 and 8 and if B are the numbers 3 4 5 6 then not A would be the numbers from the universal set that are not in B 1 2 7 8 9 here's a Venn diagram that gives you the visual of the set A where the numbers 1 3 5 7 and 9 are in set A and then outside of A out here in the green area you have A prime which would be the numbers 2 4 6 and 8 okay let's look at an example a poll was passed out to a hundred students that had three questions do you own an iPad do you own a laptop do you own an iPad and a laptop so iPad 70 said yes 30 said no laptop 50 said yes 50 said no both 40 said yes and 60 said no so if we wanted to answer some of these questions like this how many students own an iPad but do not own a laptop or how many students own a laptop but do not own an iPad what we could do is we could write the uh, the visual in a Venn diagram now the universal set has a hundred in here 
and the number of elements in A intersect B, generally we write it like that, but when I write a Venn diagram, I don't because it makes it a little bulky. But um, so if you look at the intersection, 40 on both. So notice I put 40 right here in the middle. All right. Now in set A, which I didn't label, set A has to have a total of, let's see, set A, I'm going to let that be the group that owns the uh, iPad. So in set A, I have a total of 70. And in set B, I have a total of 50 because 50 on the laptop. But if you look at here, this 40 right here are the ones that own an iPad and a laptop. So if you take this 70 that has to be in this circle, then you have, um, if you take the 40 away, then you find that there's 30 that own an iPad but do not own a laptop. So these two numbers have to add up to the total in A, which is 70. And then over here, remember, you have 50 that said they own a laptop. And since 40 own a laptop and an iPad, then if you take 50 minus 40, you'll find that there's only 10 students that own just a laptop. So putting this all together, this is called A intersect not B, those that own an iPad but not a laptop. There's 30 of those. Those that own both, there's 40 of those. And those that do not own an iPad but own a laptop, there's 10 of those. Now, if you add these up, you get 30 plus 40 plus 10, which is 80. So what about the other 20? Well, it turns out the other 20 fall down here outside of both circles because they don't own either. They, they own neither a laptop or an iPad. From the diagram, you can answer these questions below here, so I'll just let you read those. But you can see that those that own an iPad but not a laptop would be the 30, and that those that own a laptop but not an iPad would be the 10, and those that own either an iPad or a laptop, that's the union. So you can get the union by just adding these three numbers together, 30, 40, and 10, and you get 80. And then those that own neither, I've already told you, is 20. And those that do not own an iPad, well, the iPad would be this circle A, so you have to count not only the 10 here, but the 20 here as well that do not own an iPad, so that would be 30. Okay, to save time, pause the video right here and read this problem and, read, and then read the questions. So to solve this problem, I'm going to label three Venn diagrams, one for animation, one for comedy, and one for drama. Okay, so if you read the problem, you've got 24 that like all three. So that would be right in the middle. All right, the next step, one does not like any of the three. So that's outside. You might have to go back and read this. All right, 34 liked animated and comedy. So let's look where that would be. Animated and comedy would be this piece here. And we have, have to have 34 here, so that would be 10 here. And then uh, 32 liked comedy and drama, so that's this piece here. Let's see, 32 liked comedy and drama. I'm sorry, that would be here this piece here. And so these two have to add up to 32. And then uh, 36 liked animation and drama. So that would be this piece here. And it has to add up to 36. So I just made them add up to 36. Okay. And once you get that filled out, you know a total of 51 liked animated. So if you look in the animated area, you've got 10, 24 and 12, so you just need 5 to make it add up to 51. And then the same for comedy, you've got 10, 24, and 8, and add 7 to make it add to 49. And then for drama, you have to add 16 to make the drama circle add up to 60. And then you can answer all of the questions using the Venn diagram. So I'll let you uh, look at the Venn diagram and the questions because I'm about to run out of time here on this video. So you can see the Venn diagram, and then you can see the questions. You can pause it, but it's a neat little puzzle that you can work. I'm going to go ahead and show you one more problem that you'll just have to pause the video and take a look at. 
And that's pretty much all I have time for, but this is just another example that you can look at.